What's up you guys? So I am back in action. For those of you who do not know, I was actually in the middle of moving when I decided to take just a little bit of a break from YouTube so I can make sure everything is running as smooth as possible and then the move was successful, which in fact it was. We now moved into a new apartment. It's a two bedroom apartment that we converted into an office so that I have a safe and secure spot to actually film some videos. I made some few subtle changes to the channel so everything is looking very nice. I hope you guys are enjoying. But with that said, I do miss you guys. I miss giving you guys some instructional videos so you can be looking your very best. And during my break, I did notice that there were some guys that were looking exceptionally well when it comes to their style. You guys have picked up a lot of tips that are here on YouTube and on Instagram. You guys are looking your very best. However, on the opposite side of the spectrum, I did notice that there are some things some guys were rocking that were very questionable to say the least. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going all over the things that I saw and the things that I want you guys to avoid at all costs so that you're looking your very best. All in today's video, coming up. Welcome back to HP Fashion. If you're new, my name is Zach Fobbs and today we're going over 10 items that all guys should avoid wearing, starting with the first one and that is the cross body bag. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's a trend that actually started, I think like in the summer of 2017 or 2018 and it's these little bags that guys are wearing across their bodies to where they can hold a lot of like their keys, phones, wallets, headphones, you name it. And to be honest with you guys, I don't see a point in that. If you guys actually just want to have a bag to you know, have with you to carry your everyday items with you, then I would just encourage you to just get a bag or a backpack to say the least. Something that is, looks very simple, very stylish, and not something look like you're really chasing clout. And let's just be honest here with you guys, it's a fanny pack. It's a fanny pack that's just worn in a different way than where fanny packs were originally created. Let's just be real here. Number two, huge huge logos. Whenever I see a guy rocking a really big and obnoxious logo on his shirt, it reminds me of the time where guys were wearing those really weird looking hats that still had like the price tag and the stickers on it. Yeah, that serves the same purpose. Basically what you're trying to do is show off how much money you spent on that particular item so that you can receive clout from it. Now that might be all the case for a lot of you guys who are into like streetwear and stuff like that, but in my opinion, this is not really how I would go about it if I'm trying to look rich, despite the fact I didn't really spend that much money on something. In my opinion, the best way to go about this is to actually go with something that looks very plain, very simple with no logos on it. In my opinion, a lot of the best, cele best looking celebrities with the best looking styles actually follow this concept and you might never know they may have picked up that shirt at a Target versus a Gucci store. Number three, deep v-necks. This is the one item that absolutely screams, I'm in a fraternity, I'm instantly gonna call you bro, you're gonna instantly think that I'm a douchebag in some sort of way. Just very short, very simple. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see your man cleavage. Sometimes exposing yourself like that just to show off your masculinity is not the best way to go about it, trust me. And speaking of looking like a total douche, number four, those custom muscle shirts that guys make at home right before they hit the gym you know the one I'm talking about the one where they like cut out the arms cut out the sides and they're just showing off their entire side region right here and it just shows like you have tons of folds all in your you know side just to show off how muscular you are it just looks gross and it's very distracting whenever you're at the gym and honestly no girl I mean no girl is gonna be attracted to that believe me Number five, a worn out belt. Now, I know what you're thinking, Zach, why would a belt matter? You don't even see it like 95% of the time, it doesn't matter, which I will tell you that you're wrong. Whenever you see a guy's belt, at least when I do, it all helps me you know, think about the entire process of the outfit that he is wearing. It makes me think what extra detail did he put into that? If he's wearing a really nice looking belt that is coordinating with all his leathers, with all the metals that he is wearing, I think that he's a pretty good looking guy and he is rocking that outfit perfectly. However, if he's wearing a belt that looks like he's been through hell and back, then I think that he didn't really pay that much attention to the overall outfit and that belt is bringing down the overall quality of his entire look. 
Today's video sponsor is Anson Bell. If you guys see me talk about Anson Bell all the time here on the channel, you guys know how much I love them and their belts are absolutely amazing. If you're looking for something to replace yours and have something that is very high quality and will last a really long time, I would consider go checking them out. They have completely changed the way that we wear belts in general. They even changed the way that we even put them on, which sounds crazy. Whenever you guys put on a belt, how do you usually do it? You put it on and whenever you, you loop it through the buckle and you you punch that little little hand, that little wand thing through a hole. In fact, that is actually what's causing the damage on your belt. And over time, the more and more that you punch through that hole and come out of it, you're going to be overall bringing down the overall quality and wearing down that belt. Eventually it's gonna start developing creases and cracks and start exposing the overall fibers inside that belt. But with Ansa belt, there are no holes. In fact, how you adjust the belt is this little track system they have underneath it. It's very, very cool. It's one of those cool things that you, where you can like interchange the belts. You can actually change, I think it's like a micro adjustable track system, I think I believe is what they call it. And it's very cool. You can adjust the length, the, how much, how tight you have it all throughout the day and it's very easy and it, it, but one of the most favorite things i like about anson belt is that their belts and their buckles are interchangeable you can buy a multitude of them and have different styles for different occasions you can accomplish different looks and different feels with all your different outfits if you guys want to go check out anson belt i have their website linked in the description below for you to go check out i think the best deal is like their bundle deal where you get either one or two choices you get either two belts and three buckles or you get three belts and and two buckles and they're all a really good price i would recommend 100 percent go check them out thank you so much for instant bell for sponsoring today's video let's move on guys number six cargo shorts or pants this is one of those things that is just is an outdated style it's an outdated look unless you're really just kind of stuck in the 90s or early 2000s there's no real reason why any guy should be really wearing this unless he's actually using them for their function nowadays and what guys are calling them work pants. If you guys want to have an absolutely stylish look, you feel like you want to take it up a step above jeans, but you don't want to exactly go like to trousers, then you want to just buy some chinos. Some great looking slim fit chinos are going to look absolutely amazing on any guy that sports them. I guarantee you. Number seven, pleated khakis. Now, the same, this is the same thing, just like the, with the cargo pants. There's very old, very outdated, and it's just unnecessary if you're trying to go for a dressy look. In fact, what you want to try to do is either do, yes, do the chinos, but also do some nice dressy looking trousers. You can find these anywhere at Gap, Old Navy, Banana Republic, and they're absolutely amazing, especially if you go and get them tailored, get them hemmed. It costs like an extra 10 or 15 bucks on, 10 or 15 bucks on top of what you paid for. I guarantee you guys, you're gonna like how you look. Fun fact, Despite, you know, my mom, you know, buying them a lot for me and I'm grateful for her, I absolutely hated pleated khakis. Whenever she would ask me to throw those on for like church or a really important event or something like that, I would give her the worst time ever about putting them on. I just, to this day, I just hate pleated khakis. Number eight, Toms. Those are absolutely horrific, especially on guys. Those are just a type of shoe that is just has no support. There's no real structure to them. So there's no way they're gonna be supportive for your feet. But to me, it's like too casual. It's like wearing slippers to even to Walmart, which even I wouldn't do. I will at least throw on some Converse or something like that when I'm just running to the store real quick. Not some weird looking shoes that can get dirty the more and more you wear them. There's just I really realistically don't see any real function that those shoes have. I'm sorry if you're a Tom lover, but if you're rocking here at the HP community, I will highly recommend that you don't do that anymore. And like I said, if you wanna go for a nice casual look, you can always go for some nice canvas looking sneaks or even some nice leather looking shoes that are very nice, very casual. You don't feel like you're too stuffy, too dressed up or anything like that. You can wear them and go just about anywhere you want to. I'm sorry for the harsh, you know, rant about Toms, but you just don't know how much I don't like them on guys' feet. Another thing that I absolutely hate on guys' feet are thong flip-flops. There's nothing more disgusting than when I have to look at another man's feet. It just looks horrible. A lot of times, 
guys don't put on lotion on so it just looks very ashy very dry it looks like the grand canyon down there and not only that you're wearing this very old and dusty looking flip-flop and it looks absolutely disgusting and it brings down the overall quality of your outfit to the ground and i really don't really see a real function to have flip-flops the only reason why i would think to have flip-flops if if, if you're on vacation if you're at the beach or you're on a cruise or something like that then yeah go ahead and rock them to make sure that your feet are at least looking decent because those are something that you don't typically want to try to be wearing 24 7. and the last thing on my list for today is going to be fakes you guys know what i'm talking about counterfeit items that a lot of guys try to outsource and get to help look like they can actually afford a rolex or a gucci belt or balenciagas you guys know this whole entire deal and honestly, in my opinion, that's not the way to go. If you guys are, you know, in that culture where you buy a lot of counterfeit items, I would recommend you get out as soon as possible, like now, because you guys are just wasting your money. You guys spend so much time and so much money on something that looks like the real deal. When in fact, if you actually just saved up that money and just stepped away objectively, just have some patience down the line, you can actually afford that item that you're trying to pull off with that fake. And what a lot of things, what a lot of times I'll tell you is that you don't actually need to buy that really expensive item. That money that you're spending on the fake, you can buy something else that is of a good quality and of a great price. Like for example, if you don't want to spend two hundred dollars on a really fake looking Rolex, then spend two hundred dollars on a very good looking Vincero watch. These watches look amazing and they're really good quality for the prices that you're paying for them. So I just recommend that any guy who is trying to go for a counterfeit looking item, then don't go for it. Plus, I had to imagine whenever you're wearing something that's fake, you have a bit of a guilty conscience. It's like you're wearing it and you think everyone knows that I'm wearing a fake watch. So why am I wearing this? It means in my opinion, I would be self-conscious of that thing 24-7. If you guys made it this far to the end of the video, thank you so much for sticking around. Give this video a big thumbs up if you learned something new here today. Also, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Anson Belt. I'll have their website linked in the description below for you to go check out. And thank you so much, guys, for continuing to support the channel and being patient with me all throughout this process. I love the look and the feel of this office and this new studio that I've set up for myself. Everything looks and feels amazing. But thank you so much for your support, guys. We're getting closer and closer to 500 subscribers which if we do hit that point i'll do another giveaway with spreads of box free on on my instagram at mr hb fashion so follow me there so you can stay up to date on how that giveaway is going to happen but thank you so much for tuning in guys I'll see you next time